A nice fall day in suburban Long Beach, New York. Philip Gonzalez and his dog Ginny are taking a walk along the beach. It's a very on, ordinary scene. Come on, go in the water, come and Ginny, who's a mixed Good Schnauzer girl. Siberian Husky, behaves like a very average dog. But nothing could be further from the truth. Ginny is a dog with special talents. She's a lifeguard of sorts, and Philip was her first rescue. Come on, Ginny. Philip used this to be way. a construction worker until a bad accident lost him his job and left him depressed and in constant pain. I was feeling really depressed, staying indoors, not going out, and my friend Sheila suggested that I go to the local shelter and adopt a dog. Philip is a big guy, and when he went to the shelter, his first idea was to get a big dog. He was looking for a companion, but a tough-looking one. Kevin Colin at the shelter thought Philip would be better off with a cat. It would be easier for him to take care of. But Philip insisted on a dog. But the dog he met was neither very tough nor in good shape. Jenny was abandoned. It was a sad story. And she was home alone at this house for about two weeks. She finished her food. She drank all the water that was available in the, in the apartment. And we were called by the sheriff to go and bring her in. So we brought her to the shelter, and she was not happy. She was very upset, you know, of being abandoned. And she's a sensitive dog until Philip came in. And that was the day that she got up off her feet, wagging her tail, and was just a natural attraction. And this is the first time I've actually seen her look attentive and alive. She's been very depressed. Ginny chose me at the shelter when she first saw me. She got up from the back of the cage and started licking my hand and they convinced me to take her for a walk. A short walk was all it took for Philip to realize he didn't need a big German Shepherd or a Rottweiler. Little Ginny was dog enough for him. I only walked a quarter of a block and I came back and he was, said, you're back so soon, you don't want the dog? I said, yes, I'm taking the dog, she's my dog. And from the moment he walked out with Ginny and came back in and said, I'm gonna take her, I was been amazed. He had a look in his face that hasn't changed. It's been a look of joy. What Philip didn't know was that Ginny was going to take them both on an extraordinary adventure. It all began on one of their nightly walks when Ginny started to act strangely excited. Something had caught her attention. But Philip couldn't figure out what it was until he saw the cat. I was walking and she saw this cat in this vacant lot and she ran towards this cat. And at first I thought it was gonna be a bloodbath because I'd never seen cats and dogs get along. And I couldn't run up to Ginny fast enough. And once she got up to the cat, she sniffed the cat and started cleaning it. Far from looking for a fight, Ginny seemed to want to help the cat she found that first night and she did the same thing the next night and the night after that. Ginny seemed to have a sixth sense that drew her to cats in trouble. For some reason, she thinks all the cats belong to her. She thinks they're all her babies. Ginny's always there 365 days a year, and it doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, sleet, or whatever. Ginny is the dog who rescues cats. No matter how they look, they could be missing a limb, an eye, an ear. It could be blind, deaf, and she loves them all just the same. It's an odd rescue mission that Ginny's been on for the last 11 years. In garbage dumps, vacant lots, or abandoned cars, anywhere a stray cat may be in need. She's found over 800 cats, and uh, we've placed over 700. After a cat is rescued, its first stop is a checkup with Dr. Louis Gelfand. And I see we have another. Who is this today? This is a kitten Ginny rescued this morning. It's been a remarkable experience having an opportunity to work with them. And these cats love this dog. And it's been repeated over and over through the years where these are injured cats. There's been cats with no legs. There's been cats with problems neurologically. Put them in a cage. Ginny would run up to the cage, and these cats will come right to her. And that's just a remarkable thing. We just never see that. They all seem to respond to Ginny and Ginny to them. It's almost like an abnormal maternal instinct. 
I've been a vet for 17 years and I have never had the opportunity to see another animal like this. I don't know if I ever will. I know that there are many pets in homes where there are both cats and dogs and they seem to get along well. The difference here is that these are not pet cats. These are feral animals and Ginny just seeks them out and they seek her. All right. Well, Ginny, well done. You did it again. She wants a treat. This is where Ginny and Philip live, and it's far from a lonely existence. Because if most of Ginny's rescues get adopted, there are still quite a few who end up members of this unique family. In these crowded quarters, there are two nearly invisible dogs and a menagerie of formerly homeless cats. Almost all of them have something that's prevented them from being adopted, but not one of them has a prejudice against dogs. This is Madam. Now, Madam is Ginny's. Wow, Madam. Never said anything before. Madam was Ginny's first rescue at the shelter. This is Jackie. Jackie was uh, born blind. This is King Arthur. This right here is Atlas. Here is Rufus. This up here is Darlene. Sheila was found in uh, the glove compartment of a car with her brother Shelby. Thank you. Mm. Good girl. And here, Rosie was found in ice under a dumpster. They're all Ginny's cats, her babies. And every time a new cat comes in here, the new cat thinks it's died and gone to heaven. And they all seem to gravitate towards Ginny, all the cats. She visits them all, they're all her babies. Sometimes she takes like a head count. She goes from cat to cat, seeing who's there. And she knows when there's a cat missing. Right, Ginny? Yes, Ginny's uh, famous. She's been going to a lot of different cities, and she's had numerous awards. She's Westchester Cat Show. She got the Cat of the Year Award. Letters coming from all over the world. A dog won the Cat of the Year Award. Ginny has an unmistakable appeal, and a lot has been written about her. All around the world, people have heard about the dog who rescues cats. Come on, the go. night is dark and cold especially for a homeless and hungry animal. So Ginny and Philip have expanded their horizons. Since they can't take in every stray cat on Long Island, they've come up with a sort of meals on wheels for felines. Every night, the pair seek out the spots where they know cats in need will be, and they leave them food. It takes Ginny and Philip hours to put out all the food. Sometimes they're at it all night. Ginny's an angel. She's uh, like Mother Teresa in a way. Well, Mother Teresa would help people, she helps the cats. When the first few cars of early morning begin to appear, Philip and Ginny finally call it a night. Ginny has a lot of compassion for animals, and uh, she has, a, to me, I call a radar of the heart. In reality, I was Ginny's first true rescue, because she rescued me. Because if it wasn't for her, I think I would have been here today. My life now is a rich life. I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm much happier than I was before because I'm, I'm, I'm rescuing cats right now and dogs and just about all animals that there are, you know? It's all because of Ginny, she started it all. To me, she's really my daughter and a companion and great friend. Ginny's a small dog with a great and unique gift, a love of others that's transformed the lives of those around her. Out here, deep in the Australian outback, Milburn Creek Farm is hundreds of miles from the suburban backyards of Sydney. Around here, the farms are so big, you could drive for days to get from one end to the other. Besides the kangaroos, this is the land of sheep and the dogs and men who work them. On Milburn Creek Farm, 
The top dog is a 10-year-old Australian Kelpie named Basil. Nobody knows the precise origin of the Kelpie. Probably, it's a mixture of English Collie and the local Australian Dingo, the world's first domesticated dog, the ancestor of all modern breeds. Go back. Go back, Bass. Go back. The Kelpie is ideally suited to the tough conditions of the outback, and Basil is Michael Johnston's best worker. My main dog at the moment, he's the oldest, he's the most experienced dog. He's been on this property all his life, and uh, he's led the way over the years. This farm has more than 8,000 sheep and covers some 3,000 acres. Basil and his young son Rex work together rounding up the sheep, but although Rex is energetic, he lacks the older Back dog's here. discipline. Rex, he is a dog, he's young, he's enthusiastic, he tends to do a lot more than what Basil does, and sometimes he doesn't listen quite as well. But he's an extremely good dog on the farm. Walk him up. Kelpies have great intelligence and there. more than a touch of the hunter Stay. about them. Basil and Rex not walk only up. work the sheep, Baz, they up. stalk walk them. Up. And this gives them walk great up. control walk. over the flock. They're both a terrific pair of dogs, and they're actually two of my best friends, and as far as the farm goes, they're as good as four or five men to me. So they're great. Decides to give it away. Back here. Back here. Back here. Kelpies seem to have an back instinctive here. control here. over the sheep. Here. With their energy, their muscles, and their cunning, they keep these unruly animals in line. Although occasionally, there is a minor rebellion. They love work, they live for it. When they're working, they're actually working. It's not playing, they're really serious about it. Sometimes they get too serious about it, but they're out there to do a job and they know it. Even for an old hand like Basil, moving a herd of sheep can be a tricky business. Not the bravest of animals, the sheep have decided today that this creek is too dangerous to cross. What they need is a little motivation, which they get in the form of two determined Kelpies who make it clear that they'd better get on with it. The result, the sheep get a bit of courage and Basil and Rex get the job done. They know what to do, they know when to do it and uh, basically I'm there just telling them what to do if something's going wrong. Herding sheep in Australia is hot work, but Basil waited for his drink until the sheep were safely across the creek. Otherwise, they would have run away, and Basil would never let that happen. As a special treat, the boys get a ride home. But an Australian Kelpie's work is never done, and they wouldn't want it any other way. Why rest when you can help with a bit of sheep deworming? And this job takes a technique that few breeds besides the Kelpie can accomplish. It's called backing. The main purpose of going over their backs is to get to the front of the mob, because that's where they naturally want to be. Dogs will back naturally. If it's something that's in them, they'll automatically want to get up on top and bark and travel to the front over the top. You encourage the dog to stay in with his sheep, and it takes a lot of courage, because, I mean, they're big sheep and only little dogs, and they've got to drop in and come back through. Basil was backing when he was five months old, and he was backing right up into a shearing shed over big woolly sheep and coming back through them at five months old. 2,500 sheep can be medicated in one day this way. Right up, right up, right up. Here to me. Right up, you back here, here boy, hop in, sit, sit, get in. Back here, get up. You Rex, back here. Push up. You Rex, get up, son, get up, son. You back, push up, push up. Kelpies like Basil use many techniques to control a flock of sheep. They use their energy, their natural aggressiveness, and they use the eye. Like a border collie, the Kelpie has a devastating hypnotic stare, and no mere sheep can hope to match it. 
The dogs keep the sheep under control while Michael directs the action. A few words are all it takes to communicate with a champion sheepdog like Basil. On a huge Australian farm, the sheep can get away, far away. That's what's happened today. But Basil and Rex have the intelligence and the training to find the missing sheep and bring them back, all on their own. Dog work, dog's got to use his own initiative and get out there and do the job. I can't tell Basil what to do sometimes because he's too far away. He may have to leave me and go and get sheep and bring them up out of big gullies and he may not even be able to see me until he comes back over the top of the hill. Good boy, Rex. A working dog. He's got daily duties he's got to be perform at, and uh, yeah, he's got to work long hours. And some days the dogs might have to work up to 10 hours a day. And he's got to be able to work in the heat and the cold, the rain and the wind. The Australian National Field Day is a major event for farmers and their dogs. Basil and Rex's daily herding makes them top contenders for the sheepdog trials, a competition Basil has won many times. Of course, this isn't just herding sheep. It's proving you can do it better and faster than those other dogs. And Basil, even though he's 10 years old, is the dog to beat. He's got a reputation as big as a sheep herder's hat. These trials are a part of Australia's history. A dog by the name of Kelpie won the very first trial back in 1872. And today, Kelpies, like Basil and Rex, compete for money and prestige. It's entertainment, but for sheep herders and sheep dogs, this is serious business. Michael leads with the energetic Rex, who does pretty well. But for sheer talent, determination and intelligence, there's no dog who can touch Basil. His control over the sheep is legendary. And by the end of the day, the old veteran has beaten them all once again. Basil has more than two dozen national titles. You know, for an old dog, he that's he just that's what I mean. He gives you 150% of effort all the time. He never lets you down. He's always there and he's always trying. And a dog that tries and tries and tries they'll come up chumps every time. I mean, it's just a, it's a great thing, and especially for a dog his age, so I'm absolutely thrilled. And, you know, he's, uh, he knows it too, I think, so I'm pretty happy with him. Here, right back here, here. Behind. He may have come here. in first at the sheep trials, but here. Michael here. knows that Basil's not far from retirement. Here, and so here. one of Basil's pups looks like a likely replacement. He, he, I picked this bug out of the litter. He's a dead ringer of his father when he was a pup. Very, very much the same. Hopefully in two or three years' time, he'll take his father's place. All we can do is keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. Oh, Basil can retire. But that's the future. In the meantime, Basil is still Michael's top dog. Saturday morning at the St. Lawrence Market in Toronto. A good place to buy trinkets, crafts, candles, or Linda Arthur's hand-painted mats. Except Linda wasn't selling very many mats. I wasn't getting a lot of traffic and there wasn't a lot of people coming. You know, because my mats are fairly, well, they're more expensive than, say, candles and that kind of thing. What to do when business is slow? Advertise. And Linda's media director is Freddie, 
the huge Great Dane lounging at her feet. Freddie belongs to Linda's friend, Lynn Claney. I thought I would make uh, what I like to do best, which is be out walking with Freddie, try to make a living out of him and be happy and, and spend as much time as I can with him. So I came up with the idea because uh, Linda down at the market, uh, I wanted to get people to come over uh, and see her booth and I jokingly said I'll put banners on Freddie and I'll walk around and that's where the idea came from. Freddie's a 140 pound walking billboard. Not the sort of advertisement you're likely to ignore or forget. But Freddie isn't pushy. He's into more of a soft sell. He certainly is very affectionate. The actual breed, the Great Dane breed, they're known as the gentle giants or the Apollo of dogs. They're very mellow, laid back. Um, they're very gentle with kids. That's right, we're just down here on the other side. Come and see us. People walk by and they say, art on the floor, you know? That's the dog. I said, yeah, that's the dog. And then they come in. And uh, so it works out very, very well. Just like a postal worker, dogs are Freddie's biggest obstacle in his line of work. But he takes it all in stride. After all, he's a local celebrity. Well, he seems to like the attention. <laughs> he likes to be a star. <laughs> Freddie is a star, a big one, in every sense of the word. He's my 140 pound fur baby. Oh, yes. <laughs> Give me 